My whole life up to this time last year, I never really believed in God. I believed in science, and that's how I explained the world. I've been dating my first real love for about a year and a half. We were great together. We had so much fun, but we had problems. The biggest was that our relationship wasn't built on the strongest foundation, God. In August of that year, she was moving to Dallas to start her life as I was moving back up to Lubbock for my junior year. Her big thing was that she wanted a godly man to marry, and I was not a godly man and never called myself one. When she moved up to Dallas, she realized I wasn't what she wanted. Initially, she said that she wanted space, but that turned into us breaking up and sent my world into a spiral. This was the woman I talked about spending the future with. It was all ripped away. So I said to myself, you know what? She wants a godly man. I'm gonna read the Bible. That'll show her. And this is where I started, but for the wrong reasons. I started reading relationship plans on the Bible app, and then I started a chronological reading of the entire Bible. As I read more and more, I became more and more interested. I started watching some churches online, and I started learning and studying like you would a book in college. As I was reading, it connected with me. It was like it was already a part of me, and I, I didn't even know. Not long after that, I found myself at one of my lowest points. The same week, I went to Raider Church, and they were starting a new series called Rock Bottom. What a more perfect place to start. I was at Rock Bottom. That night, at the end of the message, they asked people who were at Rock Bottom to stand up, which I did. Then everyone else stood and placed their hands on us and prayed. I felt so much relief that night, like everything bad in my life had been pulled out and the Holy Spirit moved in. That was the night I gave my life to Jesus. My dad was diagnosed with congestive heart failure a few years prior to that semester. A livable condition if you do all the right things. The week before Thanksgiving, I received a call that my dad was back in the hospital and it appeared a, a part of his past had gotten a hold of him once again but this time for a worse turn. He eventually got out and finals week, I received another call telling me that my dad was back in the hospital and this time it didn't look like he was gonna make it out. My dad wasn't a believer, so I was overwhelmed with the urgency to be by his side. I talked to my professors and got a flight home as soon as I could. December 11th, 2017, I did the hardest thing I ever had to do. I had told my dad that it was okay to go. Early the next morning, he passed away. The entire month prior, I was learning and planning on talking to my father about what I had learned through reading the Bible in hopes of him accepting Jesus into his life. And I was worried I may not get that chance. Before he passed, the chaplain from the hospital came in and told me that he and my dad had been talking. The last time he saw him, he had prayed for him and he said, my father had felt forgiven for everything he's done in his life. I was shocked because this wasn't my dad at all. And yet at the end of his life, he had an encounter with Jesus. There was a reason I didn't get that chance to share with him, whatever it was. Then that day after he passed, someone close to me had told me that he had a dream of him standing in front of them in a completely white suit. And all he said was, everything's gonna be okay. And I believed it. We had a series at Raider Church called DM. I felt like I had received a message from God during it, and it was the same word three times. Go, go, go. I didn't understand what he meant at the time, but I was challenged and driven over the next few weeks to sign up for our mission training group called Phase One. And now here I am a year later, I finished reading through the entire Bible. I'm still leading a Raider group and soon I'll be leading an explore group for our missions department. And I feel that one day I may be called to plant a church. There are people that know the Bible more than me. There are people that can speak better than me. There are people that can pray better than me. There are people that can share their faith better than me. All I strive to be is the best that I can be and to be who I feel God has called me to be. As I lost my father, I didn't lose my faith. And as my entire world shook, my hope remained in Jesus.